This is the brand new S1 laser from Xtool, but do you need to upgrade from your D1 Pro or other diode laser? In this video, I'm gonna walk through some of the cool features of this machine, like engraving curved surfaces and automatic Z height, and help you decide if it's worth the hype. It kind of looks like the Xtool P2 CO2 laser, but it's not. This is Xtool's first fully enclosed diode laser. A couple of the features are very similar to the P2, but at a fraction of the cost of a CO2 laser. Xtool sent me this laser to test and review, and I've been biting my tongue for months now, but the time has finally come to reveal everything I know about this machine. I've also included links and discount codes in the video description if you're interested in that. If you're new to laser engraving, there are a few different classes of laser engravers. I've covered some of those in previous videos, so if you'd like to learn more about that, check those videos out in the video description. Uh, but as far as diode lasers goes, this thing is the Tesla of diodes. The S1 is the first class one safety certified enclosed 40 watt diode laser machine. It has the ability to use their redesigned 20 watt, 40 watt, or infrared modules. You'll notice the modules are more compact with a low profile to fit inside the housing of the unit, but this is not the coolest part of the system. Let's talk about the obvious change from other diode lasers out there, including Xtool's own D1 Pro. This is a fully enclosed unit. I've had a couple people comment on my videos asking about the D1 Pro, asking how I deal with exhaust. And while Xtool and others sell enclosures for those units, they're still not as good as a fully enclosed system. This is one reason why a lot of people end up going with a desktop CO2, but now you can have a diode system with many of the core functions of a CO2 laser. If you're operating a laser in a school or makerspace, maybe around kids, an open system laser isn't great. With my D1 Pro running, I'm always concerned that my kids will come in and be drawn to the light like a gnat. Uh, the great thing about the S1 is it's eye-friendly and you can run it without wearing protective glasses. It's got this green cover over the work area, which Xtool claims will protect your eyes not only from the blue light of the diode, but also the infrared module. Of course, if your eyes are sensitive to light, I still recommend not staring at the light even though it's protected. The unit comes with an exhaust hose that you can run outside or into a smoke purifier, which means that you can run this machine in areas like an office or warehouse without having to worry about fumes. Speaking of air, probably one of the best upgrades they made is to this air assist. One of my big complaints with the D1 is the air assist appeared to be more of an afterthought to the system. With this S1, the air assist looks intentionally designed and similar to the style of the main unit, but that's not it. Now the air assist plugs directly into the unit and has the ability to turn on automatically in addition to having fixed airflow settings. I can't tell you how many times I had forgotten to turn on the air assist with my D1 Pro, so this is a welcome upgrade. The unit plugs directly into the back of the machine just like this. I have the 40 watt module on this unit, but Xtool does provide the option to swap out the units just like their D series machines. So if you wanna start with the 20 watt unit, it's still gonna pack enough punch for you to engrave and cut lots of different materials. At the time of recording this, the 20 watt module is about $500 less than the 40 watt module. If you're wondering which one you should get, it comes down to what type of projects you're mainly doing. And since the 20 watt module has about half of the amount of diodes, it produces a slightly smaller dot size, meaning if you want a super fine engraving or engraving small text, the 20 watt will handle that a little bit better. However, if you're wanting to cut through thicker materials, the 40 watt module may be what you need. You can also swap out the unit for the infrared module, which will allow you to etch a wide variety of metals. The great thing about being able to swap out the units is that you can use the right module for the type of work that you wanna do. Beyond swapping out the modules for the various projects, you may be wondering about the capacity of the S1. The work surface is around 13 by 20 and has the ability to swap out either the upgraded honeycomb or these bars that lay at the bottom of the work bed. Let me tell you that the honeycomb bed is high quality and includes these really cool magnet hold downs. The honeycomb bed is actually pretty heavy and very durable. The Z height will obviously be adjusted when you put the honeycomb bed in there, but there is an option to add the riser just like on the P2. Using the riser will not only give you extra Z height, you'll need that if you wanna use the rotary attachment. I haven't been able to test the riser and rotary with this machine, 
but I have used the rotary on my D1 Pro and it's the same one, so I don't expect any difference in the performance of that on this unit. Let's talk about speed and then I'll share a complaint with you. The advertised speeds for this unit say that you can engrave at 600 millimeters per second. So I tested that. I noticed that while it does engrave pretty accurately at 600 millimeters per second, the engraving is obviously not as dark as most of us want for our projects, so chances are that you'll want to find the right setting for the look that you're going for. As with any machine, I recommend running tests on all the materials you're planning on using before you get too far down the road using the machine. Running test pieces right away will allow you to reference these a couple months down the road and see how your machine is performing. If you notice that you're having to use higher power or slower speeds, that may indicate that your lens needs cleaning, or if your lines aren't as crisp or maybe a bit jumpy, then perhaps it's time to tighten the belts on your machine. Whatever the case, run some tests when you get your machine like I did here. Both Xtool and Lightburn have various ways to run material tests. And that's another point. You can use either Xtool's Creative Space or you can use Lightburn for this. Some of the functionality for Lightburn isn't available for this machine. So you'll have to jump into Creative Space to do some of the things that we're gonna talk about in a minute. It's time for a small gripe with this unit. One thing that's frustrating with the D1 Pro is that when you swap out the modules, the connections are a bit fragile. It appears that changing out the modules for this system has the same type of connections. So I do wonder about the longevity of swapping out the unit dozens of times uh, over its lifespan, but granted, you're probably not gonna be swapping out the modules too often, but it's still a consideration. However, the cable management on the S1 is a thousand times better than the D1 Pro because the cables aren't zip tied to the bottom of the unit and the cable management seems to be really well thought out. I don't know why manufacturers always place the power buttons on the back of things. I mean, the unit isn't massive, so it's not that much of a pain, but feeling around the backside to turn it on isn't as fun as it sounds. They also included the emergency shutoff toward the back of the unit, which I guess is good so you don't accidentally hit it, but I feel it would be better served if it were up front or on top of the unit. You know, my CNC has an emergency button on a cable so I can position it wherever I want. So I would have loved to have seen that type of option in this machine. All in all, these are relatively minor complaints and in no way affect the performance of the laser. I briefly mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but the S1 has one of the same features as the P2 that a lot of people were asking for in a diode laser. You can now engrave curved and uneven surfaces. Now it doesn't include a camera system like the P2, but instead uses a probe system they call twin point positioning. You set your piece in and run the function to accurately measure the uneven surfaces. Then you can position your engraving within the area and hit run. I tested it on a few different surfaces and it worked great just as expected. Xtool claims that the twin point positioning is much more accurate than using a camera. And I can say in the test that I ran, that statement does hold true. I've used lasers with cameras before and there's always a bit of margin of error with cameras. Often cameras can skew the position, but with the twin point positioning, you can establish the location wherever you want the position of the engraving area, and then you'll get good results. I think if you're a camera person, you're a camera person, and there's nothing that I can say to convince you that this system works just as good as a camera. For example, the P2 allows you to do batch engraving by centering your engraving over one piece, and the software can match all of the other engravings, even though they're not in an organized row. It would be great if they would have incorporated this function in the machine, but I'm sure they did it for two reasons. They wanted to keep the cost of the machine down, and because of the way that the machine was built here, it would probably be difficult to place the camera without it interfering. That's just my opinion, but I think it makes sense. Since the machine has an integrated Z height to conform to the curved and slanted surfaces, it only makes sense that the machine includes dynamic focus engraving. This means that the machine integrates an autofocus system. No more playing around with little bars that you have to drop down on the work surface and pray it doesn't scratch your workpiece when it folds back up. Position the laser over your work surface, focus the machine, and the module will go back to the back of the machine to reset the pin to its upright position. Every time I tested this function, it worked just as expected without any issues. Also, the pin just snaps into place, so if it wears over time, it looks like it's gonna be an easy part to replace without having to replace the entire module. 
Just like the P2, you can add an automatic conveyor feeder to do larger engravings. Uh, this is an upgrade you'll have to add if you want this function, but, and I don't have it yet, so I can't speak on its functionality yet, but I'm planning on getting this and testing it in the near future. So if you're subscribed, you will get that video when it's released. All in all, I will be recommending this machine overall to anyone looking to get into laser engraving because of the integrated safety. Not only does it extract fumes to keep your lungs healthier, the machine will pause if the lid is open so you don't harm yourself. The great thing about this is that even though the job is paused, it will resume as soon as you close the lid again and it won't lose the position. With units like the D1, it's always a bit of a gamble stopping your job because the positioning isn't as accurate as this S1. In all of my tests, the unit went to the exact spot I expected it to and I didn't experience any failures like I have with other units. Also, the unit has these cool little flame detectors at five different points, so if it detects a flame, it will shut down the unit. You can incorporate the fire safety set to put out the fire if that were to occur. If you're operating this in a school or somewhere where people may not be as familiar with laser engraving, I highly recommend this upgrade. Of course, you never want to leave your laser unattended, and I not only have a fire extinguisher nearby, but a fire blanket just in case of emergencies. Should you buy this unit? If you already have the D1 Pro or similar machine, you probably don't need to upgrade to this unit if you have an enclosure and the manual nature of the machine doesn't bother you. However, if you want a machine that takes the guesswork out of the experience, this machine is well worth upgrading to. It's not as easy to take this machine to your work surface as the open frame systems, but this unit is very light, especially compared to a CO2 machine. I hope this video has helped you, and if it has, please consider hitting that thumbs up button.